Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Williams. I'm a board certified allergist at Northwest Asthma and Allergy Center in Everett and also happen to be a commissioner for Camano Island Fire and Rescue. So Paul, can you tell us a little bit about allergic reactions to things like bee stings in the summer? Certainly. It's a good time to talk about it because bee stings are going to become more of a problem as the summer goes along and by the end of the summer around here there are a lot of angry and upset yellow jackets that want to take a piece of somebody. So um, there are a lot of different kinds of reactions that you can get to bee stings. Some people are lucky enough to not have any reaction. Some people have what we call a localized reaction, which can sometimes be quite large, but basically it's a reaction of swelling and pain that occurs around the sting and extending more than two inches away from the sting, but basically extends from the sting. So it can be an entire extremity and still be considered a local reaction. And then we have what are called systemic reactions, which affect people away from the sting and so body parts away from the sting. So you might break out in hives, for example, or your throat might swell closed. You might be wheezing or coughing. And in the more severe cases, you can actually have a drop in blood pressure um, and lose consciousness. So when it comes to a bee sting, um, it's obviously not fun and you might think to yourself, okay, at what point do I need to worry? At what point do I need to call 911? It's a good question. Um, in most cases of allergies, um, you know, you, you do an allergy test and you document that you have the allergy and based on the test and the symptoms, you go on and, and uh, prescribe therapy. In the case of venom reactions, pretty much anyone who has anything from a large local reaction to more severe reaction will have a positive skin test. So the skin test doesn't really help us decide what to do. What really makes that decision is the severity of the reaction. And with bee stings, the more severe a reaction you have, the more likely you are to have a severe reaction with subsequent stings. So if you have a mild, like you just break out in a few hives, you know, maybe 25% of subsequent stings, you'll have a similar reaction. If you have a more severe reaction, then maybe 75% of the time, if you're stung again, you're going to have a severe reaction. Not 100%, but 75%. And so, we don't mind too much if people just get some mild hives with subsequent stings or get a swollen extremity because those people we know don't usually go on to have severe reactions. It's really a myth that your reaction is going to get progressively worse with each subsequent sting until you die. And that's really not the case. The large local reactions that we talked about tend to always be large local reactions and the risk of having a severe systemic reaction is very low it's probably less than five percent so if somebody gets stung and they say gosh I got stung on the wrist and my entire arm has swelled up that's completely normal what would you recommend they do well that's what we call a large local reaction and uh, the chances are that that's going to happen in the future if they get stung again depending on the size of the reaction you know if you start with ice and antihistamines to begin with that may slow it down, but oftentimes you actually have to use drugs like prednisone, oral steroids, to get everything to stop. And you may have to take those for two or three days. For the more severe reactions, or people that are really high risk of severe, more severe reactions, then we make sure that we talk to them about how to avoid getting stung, and we talk to them about keeping uh, a self-injectable epinephrine with them because that's the immediate treatment for a severe reaction. It's not antihistamines, but it's epinephrine that you use immediately. And then we also talk to them about allergy shots for venom because they're actually very effective. So if you take a patient who's at a 75% risk of having a severe reaction with a subsequent sting and put that patient on allergy shots or what we call venom immunotherapy, that risk goes down to about 2%. Wow. Yeah. So if somebody out here thinks that they might be having an allergic reaction, what would you recommend to them? Well, again, it depends on what kind of symptoms they're having. So you want to find out, you know, are you having any trouble breathing? Is your throat feeling swollen? Um, do you feel dizzy or woozy? Those are all indicators that maybe they're having a, a severe reaction. And if they don't have an EpiPen, then obviously you need to call 911 and get help immediately. 
If they do have an EpiPen, then use the EpiPen. And depending on their response, you may still end up calling 911, but at least you've given them some therapy for a few minutes until help arrives. Great. Is there anything else that we should know about bee stings or other uh, flying insect bites this summer that would be helpful? Well, in, in the Northwest, pretty much it's just bee stings that are a problem for us. We don't have a lot of biting insects, although allergic reactions can occur to biting insects. They're much less common than stinging insects. We don't have the fire ants that they have in the south where you can get systemic reactions with the ant bites. So it's pretty much um, the stinging insects. And we do talk about you know, avoidance. I mentioned that earlier. Um, how do you avoid being stung? Well, you don't look or smell like a flower. You don't eat outdoors if you can avoid it because that attracts the insects. If you're gonna drink something, make sure it's in a clear container so you can see in it. There are a number of times when people have swallowed a yellow jacket or a hornet when they take a drink of their pop. So uh, those are all important things to do outdoors. All right. Well, thank you so much, Paul. We really appreciate it. And hopefully all of you stay safe this summer. All right, thank you.